Well, hello. Thanks for uh, spending some time uh, this afternoon uh, discussing one of my favorite topics in endodontics right now is uh, using uh, the gentle wave system, which is uh, leading the way in uh, helping us treat patients and, and take endodontics to a new level. And also this idea of how we're taking care of these teeth now with using less and less files and in many cases, no files at all. So thanks for being here this afternoon. So a little bit about me. Um, I finished my endodontic uh, practice uh, residency in, in 1999 and uh, opened my own practice from scratch. And one of the first things that I was so interested in was becoming efficient in endodontics. Uh, I hired some great practice management people, uh, endo mastery and some great accountants and other business systems. And, and, and we basically got to the point of being able to easily complete 10 to 12 cases a day, standard endodontics. And uh, it was, very great for many years. And then all of a sudden, you know, there's that, that moment where you kind of start kind of going, this is, is there more, is there uh, something else that's, that's happening that I may be missing out on? And I started to look for an exit strategy. I kind of started to get a little bored in my practice. And uh, I was just kind of had that feeling, is this all there is? And uh, we've been single visit uh, from the very beginning of time. Um, and so just that almost like a burnout uh, feeling with, with endodontics at that point. And uh, it wasn't until I went to a national meeting and I heard Dr. Brian Wells speak and he was showing some cases from this machine called the gentle wave. And we were all just blown away by the, the results and the x-rays and his, his testimony about it. And so a bunch of us jumped on the bandwagon and said, well, this seems exciting. And I certainly was a part of that and uh, brought it back to the practice and uh, started to implement things. And this training that we had been so inundated with in residency of having to get uh, a certain file to a certain position in the canal or you didn't feel good about the case, kind of led me to, 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 this quote seems to kind of really uh, hit it perfectly is that you know if all that we have is a hammer uh, everything is going to be a nail. So if there's a tooth that came back and if we said, hey, this is minimally instrumented, it must not be healing, we need to put a bigger file in there. Our mindset was totally about um, running bigger files and, and into these canals. But one of the questions that I remember hearing uh, Dr. Facer talk about was, you know, we need to stop talking about tapers and what file systems and all those things. We need to start asking, is this tooth clean? And what is the best way to, to, to clean the inside of this tooth? You know, our old objectives were, the reason why we had to get such big files, as you all know, that we needed to get hypodermic needles down into the tips of these roots and hopefully irrigate uh, and then easily fill. And then we're all looking at taper and, and these great big shapes. Uh, and, and I feel like we kind of just need to get back to that question of, is this tooth clean? which has led this whole idea and development, like what are files for now? Uh, obviously with, with this new system, we do have to gain access into the root canal system. And I'll show a couple of cases here, which definitely brings up this question in a great way. Uh, a couple of cases did not, didn't even have a hand file go into these cases, which I think is a very interesting thing. But this is kind of this new, new look. And uh, you know, this was a case that uh, I was, back in the minimally instrumented. Uh, and this was the result, this MB2 there um, that never had a file in it, yet the gentle wave system helped to clean that out all the way, gain patency. And that palatal canal is, is just still uh, blows my mind every time I look at it. Uh, one of those cases that you, you look at and you go, wow, that's amazing. So this technology to me has kind of acted a little bit like magic um, because you, 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 you're you doing these cases and then you get some amazing result. And not only just the results, and I think as we move forward in this system, we're going to be looking for follow-ups. We're going to be looking for, hey, is this working long-term? And based on trends that I'm seeing in my practice, uh, using this for over two and a half years, two practices, three endodontists, uh, it is 
significant what we're able to start seeing here. But this is a great study that I think uh, really helps kind of clarify that it's possible to clean root canal systems without instrumentation. So after I adopted this, um, I struggled with the uh, uh, incorporation into a very highly productive practice and efficiency. And I struggled with it, I'll be honest with you. Um, I found reasons to not use it. Um, I found reasons to keep it in the corner and I ended up probably only using it about 10 to 20% of the time. So my staff never really got to feel comfortable getting it ready and, and bringing it into the room and what our protocols were. So I had to develop new systems. And, uh, and, and had to start kind of incorporating a whole new instrumentation technique, uh, which was obviously reduced at that point. Um, I started using it just on retreatments um, and we were always finding something which was uh, amazing with lateral canals or some weird apical split of some sort. Um, and we started kind of noticing that, yeah, there is something to this, but we still didn't really get back to our highly efficient number of cases per day that we wanted to get to. And, um, and one of the other trends that we also kind of noticed is that the, uh, our, our post-op well checks uh, significantly reduced. Um, you know, right now, um, between three endodontists and two practices, uh, we have had maybe one flare up uh, in two, two, two and a half years uh, with one, one case. And uh, I think that speaks to patients benefit from this. Um, so over the past of the last six to eight months, I've started to use less and less files, kind of just like, well, why would I need to stick a file in there? You know, it, this doesn't make sense. And once I've started to kind of do that, I noticed some trends that really started kind of uh, helping the practice, uh, assisting me. Um, you know, there was less bleeding with not putting so many files into the canals. It assisted me in finding calcified canals that normally we'd be drilling and drilling and searching under the microscope. And, and yet the gentle wave has this ability to help lift and, and help us find these things uh, and, and actually gain patency in those canals, not just find them. And it cleans so efficiently that uh, I think the more files that we use, the gentle wave system has to work harder. And I think it works best, uh, at least in my hands, when uh, those shapes are the way they originally were. And that's when things really uh, are efficient. So right now I'm not really using any files at all. I do like to at least get a 10 uh, just to get working length. That's still uh, my old uh, go-to endodontic training. Uh, and, and but that's the only file right now for me that, that, that's going into that apical region. So where are we? Um, this was my very first case uh, ever of non-instrumentation endo. It was an 88 year old um, gentleman uh, symptomatic necrotic pulp um, and, and symptomatic apical perio. I got into this tooth and it was one of those just a gray, there was nothing. Uh, I could see where things were at one point. In the old days, you know, we would, I would drill and drill and drill and, you know, at some point try and get a file in there. Maybe it separates. Um, and then you have to do surgery or maybe the tooth so hogged out at that point that, uh, you know, there's nothing to do but um, pull the tooth. And I just decided to say, hey, you know, I'd heard some stories about this. So I just hooked the gentle wave up to it and uh, was literally hoping and, and, <laughs> and that moment of uh, anxiety and excitement, um, that thrill of the fill. And uh, when I took the gentle wave off and looked into the tooth under the microscope, I not only saw the mesial buccal, distal buccal, and palatal canal, I also saw MB2. And there was just a, just a tiny little bit of uh, heme there and uh, was able to kind of wick away with very, very small paper points. And now I was like, okay, there's something here, which is really phenomenal. And so I, I did a backfill with uh, the navy tip and sealer. And I did, I pushed, I wanted to make sure that if there was a pathway there uh, that I wanted it to get. And as I was looking under the microscope, uh, I see MB1 getting filled and then the sealer starts to come up MB2. And so I knew right then that, that we're onto something here. So this is a huge mindset shift. And in short, we have been able now to get gentle wave into this high efficient practice, uh, being able to complete 10 to 11 cases a day without stress. Like we mentioned, we have a lot less flare ups and post-operative discomfort. Um, and that's across the board, a trend that is just to me amazing. Um, we're jumping into teeth that we would normally have classified as hopeless and finding some reason for this 
uh, lesion between roots that uh, is explained by the root canal system draining out into the furcation and things like that. So basically, we're accessing, uh, running the gentle wave, uh, drying the canals, and then and then filling. Um, the profitability is also another port. Not only did I want to be efficient, but I also wanted to be profitable with this, and we charged the patient for this, this technology. Um, just real quick, the overhead in 2018 that we spent on files uh, was 60,000. In 2019, uh, as we were kind of in the minimal instrumentation, uh, we were at 38. And in 2020, uh, that's what we spent 11,000 uh, on files. So that's a pretty huge reduction in overhead. And then many people charge different things, but just on average, if you're doing 160 cases a month and you're charging 200 and let's say the gentle wave with the handpiece and the equipment and the uh, sound seal and all those uh, things that come along with that is about $70 a case. Um, so you can kind of put all this together. It can be a profit center uh, for your practice. Um, and if patients have a hard time paying, you know, we realize the benefit of this and are going to use it anyway, but patients have not uh, uh, ever balked at that. So it's also what's best for the patient. Uh, I think it was Herb Schilder um, said, if you make yourself the patient, you always have the answer. And uh, I think that's another key portion of this. So real quick, my clinical protocols, uh, access, locate. Um, I like to just kind of rinse out the occlusal with a little bit of sodium hypochlorite. I go right to working length. And then I run the gentle wave system uh, in its entirety. Uh, we dry the canals and uh, sealer, gutta percha, and uh, system B, and just a little condense uh, to, to kind of push things where it needs to go. I like this case, this kind of this mesiobuccal root kind of shows uh, you know, I did not instrument MB2, yet uh, the gentle wave system was able to, to draw out and also allow sealer to fill in that mid root region, which our files would never get into that. This is a case that I, in standard endodontics, most likely would, would have been a, an apical surgery. Just some other cases that I'm just bringing up through the, um, you know, past six to, to eight months, some of the complexities here in this uh, mesiobuccal uh, root on the left and the right. Um, there's just so much complexity in these teeth that we just don't have to take files into. C-shaped canals, I think one of the, the biggest uh, and best uh, things to treat these are the, the gentle wave system and, and uh, just the complexities down there in that apical third uh, are mind blowing. So this is a case uh, that we did uh, back in December 2020 with single visit. Um, uh, obviously, large radiolucency and uh, and patient uh, uh, was feeling better. This was the post-op that day and uh, love the little split there on the distal root. And this was three and a half months recall, um, significant healing, and the patient had been asymptomatic through the entire uh, uh, time frame. And to me, that, that is a trend towards success in, in a short amount of time. Uh, so does non-instrumented endodontics work? Absolutely. Um, and as these cases keep coming in with other practitioners as well, I think it's uh, really great to, um, uh, to be sharing these. So these are some things that I have realized that, yes, you can use this technology in an efficient practice, and this should not be a technology that holds you back or slows you down. Matter of fact, I think it makes things easier and more simple. And uh, also there's the economic and marketing boost to, to, to be on this current uh, technology. And, you know, I believe that the, this is the future of endodontics. There, there probably will be other systems that come out uh, with other companies. Uh, Sonendo is certainly leading the way, uh, obviously, right now, and, um, but I, I believe that this is the future uh, of endodontics. Thank you so much, and uh, follow me on uh, Instagram, um, endo to endo Consulting, and uh, look forward to hearing questions and sharing cases as, as we all go through this uh, path together. Thank you.